almost there. Here's the latest update report of the Red Hat++ command station project along with some demos and technical specifications. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. First a quick look at the newest board revision and the specifications. Here is a picture of the lower side of the board where most electronic components are placed. If you are interested, simply pause the video here and take the time to have a look at the details. You might be surprised by the size of the power relay. You're right, this relay is too small to handle 10 amps and in the final version it will be replaced by a slightly larger one. Other than that, the components are pretty much the final design. Turning the board around, here is the picture of the top side. As you see, the top side is mainly used to place the connectors and of course the IBT2 module which provides all the power to the rails. Easy to recognize are the four Loconet connectors, two on the back side mainly intended for connections to the layout and two on the front side intended for throttles. All four carry the rail sync signal so they can be used to power throttles, boosters and other Loconet devices. Finally, there are three LEDs on the front side that are used to indicate work mode, power status and programming track activity. The board is then mounted into the Red Hat++ enclosure, which right now is just a quick and dirty design to show something. I plan to make the final version with more rounded corners and the like. When all comes together, the result is a Loconet booster and command station with all the features shown in the next few slides. As before, if you are interested, pause the video and read through the slides. If not, let's see how it works. To get started with Red Hat++, you insert the IoTT stick into the hat connector and connect the growth port cable to the other side of the stick. The growth port cable, as always, is needed to connect the stick to Loconet. Then you switch the DC power on and the IoTT stick will start up and connect to Wi-Fi or provide an access point on its own. You then can load the configuration page from a browser or your smartphone. Select Red Hat++ CS to make the stick work as command station or Red Hat++ B to use it as a booster. On the command source side you select either Loconet or Loconet with LB server or MQTT gateway. Click save and restart and after rebooting you will get the configuration pages for the LED chain and the input buttons as well as the Red Hat++ main configuration page. The last one so the main configuration page is still work in progress, so I will explain it in a future video. And if you don't want to miss that, it is a good idea to subscribe to the IoTT channel and click the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when new videos become available. Now, in the last video I already showed you how to run a locomotive using the Red Hat++ command station and the Digitrax DT400 throttle. So in this video I'm focusing on two other features that are maybe not so common in a command station. The digital inputs and the LED chain. The digital inputs work the same way as the inputs on the yellow hat, although with fewer options as at this point they are digital only and analog input data is not supported. To configure them Simply open the hardware button setup page. For each input you can select what Loconet message it should generate and for what address. Let's say on bank A you connect a current sensor module like the MPG Diode 8 as shown in video number 68. You then select input report for the first 8 inputs and assign the address you want to use for each input. If you want the whole board to use consecutive addresses, you can use the board base address feature. Simply enter the address of the first input, then click enter and after confirmation, 
all input lines will be renumbered accordingly. You can also change what input status is considered as occupied and free. If you activate the sensor, you see the result immediately displayed in the browser, so you can verify the functionality. And after saving the configuration, you see the input messages flowing over Loconet and you can make them visible in JMRI and other software. Alternatively, you can also make the input send out button messages or turn out position messages. If you choose button, you get individual messages for button down, button up, button click and button hold, which can be used anywhere in the Loconet network to trigger action or control devices, etc. On the LED chain configuration page, you can specify what the LEDs should be doing. This is identical to the blue hat setup shown in video number 44. Let's say we want LED number 5 to show the status of the first block detector input, which we just programmed. To do so, I configure the LED to listen for the input message of block detector 1 and show red if the block is occupied and yellow if it is free. LED number 8, on the other hand, I want to display the position of turnout number 5. Let's say blue for closed and red for thrown. So, I select the colors for both positions and for both sensor statuses, then I click save and restart and voila! The LEDs are now displaying the requested information as soon as I send a switch command from the handheld throttle or change the block detector status. Note the address offset of 1 for the turnout. As explained in video number 44, this is a result of the technical numbering of switches in the DCC standard. If you would like to control everything from JMRI or a wide throttle, that is simple to configure as well. First, you select Loconet LB Server as your command source interface. After saving, you will get the LB Server tab in your browser. Open the page and enter the port number you want to use. This must be the same as in your JMRI setup. JMRI by default is set to 1234, so most likely you do not need to change that. Then open JMRI and open the Preferences window. Here you create a new Loconet connection and enter the IP address that is displayed on the IoT T-Stick. Then click Additional Connection Settings and verify that the port number is the same you selected on the IoT T-Stick. Restart JMRI and you are good to go. When you now open a turnout control panel, you can send a command to the turnout and you see the LED change color accordingly. And if you enter a switch command on the throttle, or change the block detector status, you see the change updated in JMRI and the message is displayed in the JMRI Loconet Viewer. If you are a Wise Throttle user, you now can set up the Wise Throttle interface in JMRI by simply starting the Wise Throttle server. You then enter the displayed IP address and port number into your Wise Throttle or compatible application, in my case Engine Driver and you can control locomotives and turnouts from your smartphone. And that's what I wanted to show you in today's short video. I still have some work to do to finalize all the software, but as you see, there is progress. I hope this video was useful and interesting for you and you have now a better idea about the performance profile of the Red Hat++ Plus Plus command station. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. By doing so, you keep me motivated to work on this project and you also help to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general. Because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.